Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mike, and thanks for jumping on here with me this morning. As this week, I want to share a few tips with you that I've learned over the years that make everything so much smoother, so much better and easier. And uh, our customers' experience will be so much better with just a few tips. So here we go, Mike, and this is the biggie. I'm going to start with the biggie. We're not going to count down to it. I'm going to lead with the big one. Number one, quit scheduling closings for the last couple of days each month. Oh my gosh. It makes it so stressful on everyone, everybody involved in the transaction. And here's a couple of reasons why. Now look, I get why you do it. I get it. Well, Mike, the interest adjustment, my clients want to start, want to close at the end of the month so they can skip a month on their payments. Well, first of all, nobody's skipping anything, okay? You pay for every single day you own the house. Now, when you pay it, you might say, well, but if they close on April the 28th, which is a nightmare, uh, then they don't have to make a payment till the first day of the next month. So that would be May. They, would, they wouldn't have to make a payment until June 1st. And I say this to you. Well, they're still paying for the same number of days. So when they go to sell that house, they're going to have to catch up on that little 30-day period there. Uh, but it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. And here's why. Where's the stress come from in a real estate transaction? You tell me. Where's the stress come from? Is it in finding the house? I contend it's not. I contend that's like Christmas for adults. The fun part for the customers is browsing for homes. They like looking at homes. They like browsing online at homes. They enjoy the process. It's kind of fun. Even if there's some frustration involved in there, that's not where the stress comes from. The stress comes from the damn mortgage. And I don't, I don't want to hear about how great your mortgage originator is because they're not going to be able to control a lot of things. Uh, they're not going to be able to control staffing issues. Have you ever thought about this? Everybody wants to close the end of the month. Okay, but mortgage companies can't hire people just to work the last week of the month. They can't. And closing attorneys can't either. They can't hire people just to be staffed when everybody wants to close. So those of you that insist on closing at the end of the month, you will deal with the staffing that is available to you. And there's a lot of negative repercussions that come from this. You're feeling it whether anybody's actually explained it or not. Uh, well, if you were a mortgage company, let's just focus on the lenders for a second. What would you do? What would you do? You've got all these mortgage applications and most of them want to close the last day or two of the month and you can't staff for that each month. Now you're not going to go out there and say that to people. You're going to tell them just the opposite because everybody lies and misrepresents and exaggerates these days, right? To try to capture business. But that's what you do. You can only staff at a certain level. And so when you get back end heavy at the end of the month, what would you do? My contention is you would do the same thing that mortgage companies do. You would process the loans that you thought were most likely to be, you could close. And that would be the ones with less trouble, less problems. And the others, you're gonna need an extension. We're, we're working on it. Now look, they got all their talking points down right by now, right? They say all the right things to you. Oh, we're doing everything we can. Meanwhile, they find those trouble loans, the ones where, you know, there's a few dings and scratches, the customer's just not perfect, haven't been on the job for 20 years with 800 plus FICO scores and 20 plus percent down. Those are the ones that get closed. When you run out of staffing hours, the ones that have dings and scratches, they get put on the bottom of the pile. And we'll get to those when we can. You're gonna need an extension. And your customers, are, and you, right, because you were kind of counting on that closing, and your customers, uh, maybe they gave notice to their apartment. Uh, they gotta move out. 
Maybe they have a house that they were selling and they have to move out. And now the lender's telling them, no, I need another 10 to 14 days. Why? Well, here's what they're not saying. Well, because your damn realtor wouldn't stand up to you and explain why you don't want to close on Friday, April the 28th. So now you're in the pro pile of problem loans that require a lot of labor. We'll get you, but it takes more time and effort. So you need a two-week extension as we try to work this out. Translated, as we close the loans that are most closable. You would put out the most, not the biggest fire, you would put out the fires that you could put out. And the ones that were raging a little out of control and needed a lot more effort, you would punt. You would. Why are you closing, why are you setting everything up to close the end of the month? You know, attorneys have the same problem. They only have so many closing spots. You have to have an attorney in the room to close the loan. That's a law in Georgia. You can like it, not like it, doesn't matter, that's the law. Uh, they only have so many rooms and they only have so many attorneys and they only have so many pre-closers. And when everybody stacks them up to close on Friday, April the 28th, uh, you're gonna have a problem and nobody's paying that much attention. Uh, let's take a look outside of mortgages and closing attorneys. How about movers? Well, they only have so many trucks and they only have so many guys to work on the truck. They don't create more trucks the last week of the month. They still have the same number of trucks. They just have a limited supply and capacity and everybody in our industry is trying to close at the same time. And then there's this. If anything goes wrong, if you have any unexpected issues that come up, and we always do, it's more common that we have unexpected issues come up. Maybe they're not justified, but they still have to be correct, corrected, right? Uh, well, you're all out of time and your customers got everything on a moving truck and they're freaking out. Of course they are. Not because they're emotional invalids, but because it's their life and their families and everything they own is on a moving truck sitting out in the parking lot and now they're being told that they're not ready to close. And I always go, well, why didn't your real estate agent argue with you when you said you wanted to close on Friday, April the 28th. Why didn't they? Why didn't they give you the reasons why you might not want to? Because my contention is this. I don't care how much you love your lender and I don't care how loyal you are to your closing attorney and I don't care how great your mover that you recommend is. They all have the same problems. They have a capacity issue and my bet is that you don't have so much business that they'll do anything. They'll go to the moon to satisfy you. They might want to. They might try to the extent that they can but they still have a maximum capacity issue and we're back end heavy at the end of the month. They might want to help you, they just can't. But you know what? Let's take this week. This week is going to be what? Friday, May the 5th. I just can't think of a better day to close then, well, yeah, I can. How about Thursday, May the 4th, so that we're not stacked up against a 5 p.m. Friday deadline? How about Thursday, May the 4th? What a beautiful day to close a real estate transaction. Everybody's capacity needs are down. You've got availability. You've got people that are available to pay attention to your issues and your problems. I bet your movers are available. I bet the closing attorney has what time would you like to come in and close? I think all of this requires us maybe argue with the customer isn't the best way to say it. Maybe just be a trusted advisor. Hmm, maybe that's our role. To be a trusted advisor and to say, yeah, no, I get the interest adjustment and you like that skipping a month on your payment routine, but can I tell you the three or four reasons why you might not want to do this? And then if they won't listen to you, then you've got that, I mean, you won't use it, of course, but how good does it feel when you've got that I told you so card in your pocket? Folks, 
the role of the modern agent is to be a trusted advisor, not just go along with any crazy shit stuff our customers dream up, but to actually sit with them and explain why they might not want to do that and why there might be a better way of going about it. Because I am tired of reading about how closing a real estate transaction is on the, at the top of the stress chart, ranking up there with death of a spouse. I think that is crazy and totally unacceptable, but then we're asking for it. We're making up the rules to make it about as hard and stressful as we possibly can. Be a trusted advisor for your folks and dial in with me tomorrow because I think you're going to like number two better than number one. These are going to make your real estate career go so much better so much less stressful and you're going to get so many more recommendations and referrals from your satisfied customers who had a great experience and not this pull my hair out scream at the top of my lung experience and when you go and do that and you are a trusted advisor you will have gone out there and you will have made it happen for yourself today